So my name is Ovi Ume. I'm a physician. I'm a vice president of R&D at Takeda, and I'm the franchise uh, program leader for the group of indications we call rare GI and inflammatory conditions. This is one of those areas where uh, rare inflammation is. So mesagitamab, which is our product for IgA nephropathy, is one of the products I'm accountable for. So IgA nephropathy is an autoimmune condition where the body develops antibodies. There's this antibody called GDIGA1, which develops usually after an infection. And because it's a foreign modified version of IgA, the body gets to attack it. And when the body attacks it, it forms immune complexes. So imagine something you produce by yourself, there's autoimmune reaction against it. There's immune complex deposition in the kidneys. This starts a cascade of inflammation, which leads to losing protein in the urine. And the continuous loss of protein in the urine predisposes to loss of renal function. The bad thing is that most patients don't know they have this. So it's largely asymptomatic. It's a disease of young people. But the problem is that the chronic inflammation that results in the kidney and the chronic loss of protein in the kidney, which is not supposed to happen, by the way, the chronic loss of protein in the urine leads to a loss of renal function. And basically, over a period of 10 years, about 20 patients lose their renal function and go into potentially chronic kidney disease. And so this has been likened to what they call the four-hit hypothesis. So hit one is you have formation of this abnormal GDIJ1. So that's the problem. Hit two, the body has antibodies against GDIJ1. So between hit one and hit two, you have the formation of immune complexes. Step three, the immune complexes get deposited on the renal parenchyma, on the cells of the kidney. This is hit three. And then hit four, this starts a cascade of inflammation leading to proteinuria. And so you can divide the therapies into those that affect hit one and hit two, which is the source of the problem, and those that affect hit three and hit four, which is mainly trying to mitigate the problem. Think of it as fire prevention versus firefighting. So most of the agents that are available today they operate at HIT3 and HIT4, actually HIT4 for the most part. So they're trying to ameliorate the problems that resulted from the pathogenesis itself. They do not modify the disease. So all they do is they essentially delay the onset of renal loss. So everyone loses some renal function, very small amount of over time, but the amount of renal function loss over time is sufficient for you to still have your kidneys working by the end of life. But in these people, there's an accelerated loss of kidney function per year. And all these drugs do is delay when that starts. It doesn't alter the progression. It doesn't change it to the normal. And so the unmet need lies in developing therapies that can actually affect the source of the problem. And that's where we're invested. So our drug is called mesagitima. So it is an antibody, right? an antibody that attacks cells that have CD38 on their cell surface. CD38 is a glycoprotein marker that is on some cell surfaces. Now, the good news is that this, this CD38 makes it selective. So it won't kill cells that don't have CD38, right? And it so happens that this abnormal IG, IGD, IGA1, the, the HIT1, and the IGA and IgG that our body makes to attack foreigners, also have GDIGA1. The plasma cells that produce them have GDIGA1 on their cell surface. So basically, we go to the production, the factory, not the antibodies themselves. The antibodies are made by something called plasma cells. Now, we go and we inhibit those plasma cells. We deplete them and deplete them to a level that the production of both the abnormal GDIGA1 and the antibodies that attack the abnormal IGA1, and those are reduced. And by so doing, that autoimmune effect, we abolish HIT1 and HIT2. Maybe not abolish, but significantly reduce HIT1 and HIT2, which has the downstream effects of shutting down the inflammation, shutting down the loss of protein in the urine, and hopefully translating to preservation of kidney function. So if the theory is correct, if you inhibit the production of these antibodies, you should see a re of, of these plasma cells, you should see a reduction in the level of antibodies, 
and you should see a reduction in proteinuria, which is a consequence of the inflammation. And over a period of months to years, you should see a stabilization of kidney function. So that was the theory. That was what the drug was supposed to do. Basically, we had a, a cycle of treatment that comprised eight weekly doses of our drug, followed by eight biweekly doses of our drug. So over a 24-week period, the patients received 16 doses subcutaneously. First of all, it was safe and well-tolerated because this is an early phase study, so safety is important. It was safe and well-tolerated. Nobody discontinued the drug. We had 17 patients on the study. All of them completed the study. And we had a rapid and sustained decrease in GDIGA1 to up to 60%, IgA up to 70%, and IgG up to 40%. So the three implicated agents, HIT1, GDIGA1, 62%. HIT2, IgA, 70%. IgG, 30 to 40%. So we the, the biology worked because we decreased this immunoglobulin. So the question next was, what happened to proteinuria? Well, we reduced proteinuria from a level above 1.5 grams at a 54% mean reduction. So about half of the proteinuria that was happening was decreased. And over a period of 36 weeks, we did not delay the progression, the, the loss of renal function, we stabilized it. So you, if you look at the graph, if this is year one and this is year three, the graph goes down that way. Other drugs try to bring it a little bit a little bit further away, so it takes a little more time to go down. We kept it flat. Now, I'll tell you something else that was interesting about our results. So we did what we wanted to do. We reduced plasma cells, we reduced immunoglobulins, we reduced proteinuria, and we preserved GFR. But importantly, we did this even after we had stopped our therapy. The therapy was stopped at week 22. The results I'm presenting to you were from week 36. So there was at least a 14 week period in which there was no drug on board. And that's the unique ability of mesogetimab. That's why we think we're going to be differentiated. We can do what others may claim they can do, but we can do that even when our therapy is not in place. Now, the results that were presented were from week 36, but as you can imagine, the study is ongoing. So we're collecting more data, and we may be able to show this data later on, which would be really impressive if this trend continues off therapy. So, so that, was, that was kidney week, and I think it was very well received. Uh, This is our next our next activity. We're going to go to the FDA with the protocol we think is innovative and that which we think, based on this very encouraging results, has the potential to bring a therapy that's differentiated. So obviously, this is what we're going to do. But again, the beauty of this product is the, is the potential to use it in more than one indication, right? So what we do to the immune system is predictable. We deplete labeled plasma cells, so we are selective. We're not a non-specific blocker. You need your plasma cells. I need my plasma cells. I need my immunoglobulin. So I do not want to reduce all of them. And I do not want to reduce the memory cells, which are important for vaccination, for instance, right? So, so I want a drug that can eliminate the part of my immune system that's working against me, or at least reduce the function, but as well leave me with some function to fight infection. So one of the characteristics of B cell mediators or agents that reduce the production of immunoglobulin is the, is the causation of infection. What we saw in our study was infection to the same degree as the normal population would have. There were no grade three infections in that study. And so this was a good thing that we actually wanted. So the selectivity does work. But beyond that, we've also seen that the way mesogetimab works is predictable all the time, despite different indications. And we can leverage this to have what we call a pipeline on a product. Because we know what it does, we just need to understand how diseases work and whether our mechanism can be applied to that disease. And right now, IgA nephropathy is one of them. There's actually another study we have called immune thrombocytopenia, the results of which were released at the, at the, at the conference in Bangkok. That study has actually gone to the FDA. We've negotiated it, and we're starting the first phase three study in FY24. And, and we're still we're actively, as I speak to you, exploring other indications where we can deploy this mechanism for the betterment of patients. We're very excited about the potential of these assets. We think that IGAN is an unmet, unmet need disease that is looking for options. We think our drug has the potential to deliver some of uh, what we call a innovative, potentially transformative 
solution in this condition. And also, we're very excited about the product and its potential in other indications. So stay tuned. <laughs>